think I've mentioned before one of the difficulties with building some of these old cars is just getting parts for them. Uh, a lot of new parts are made, mainly the, the parts that wear out. But there's an awful lot of things you can't easily get unless you've got a parts car. And I, I've, I've mentioned, talked about that before, that it's just, especially for the Riley, it's just really hard to find parts. But I actually had a stroke of luck and was able to buy um, a special project that uh, has a lot of parts that, that have been left over from this project. Uh, which never really got finished. So I was able to get a huge pile of stuff that's really, really useful for me. Uh, it gives me most of the bits and pieces that I was missing, uh, some which are quite difficult to get. Uh, it also gives me a lot of things that I've already got, so more clutch and flywheel parts. Um, it basically came a lot of it came in this this battered old metal trunk uh, which is a bit of a, a treasure chest really so um, I'm probably going to actually not restore that trunk but I will clean it up a little bit um, make it a bit a bit tidier just needs a few hammer blows to sort it out um, but this this special or the remains of the special came with lots of stuff so I've got a spare block um, and a spare head brake drums which is something I definitely do need um, I've got two good ones but this gives me another two good brake drums uh, it came with a spare gearbox which is actually in good condition uh, obviously I've, I've got my um, Brooklyn's ratio gearbox like I say, there's another head, uh, there was a front axle, springs, uh, some of the brake parts that I was missing. Um, these were those butterfly plates, which I, I talked about making these in another film. I actually had some plasma cut from steel plate. Uh, so now I've got a, a proper set of those. Uh, this is the pulley I was missing for the rear of the brakes. It does have a set of springs. Uh, one of them is actually cracked, broken. Um, everything on this is really worn out. I mean, you can see the the uh, the eye and the springs here. Uh, there's shackle pins and things like that, which you could think about reusing, but they're all worn out as well. Um, I am still missing a set of the, the special bolts that go through here that the brake shoes pivot on. I've got one set of this... this uh, this rear axle and I'll still need to get another one uh, there was a fuel tank which I'm probably not going to use more brake components cable brake set up uh, this remote shifter which I'm not sure if this is original or if this is something somebody's made up I probably won't use this because it's not Brooklyn's um, things like brake springs which I definitely need. I've got quite a few of these now, so I should have enough to be able to put together a good set of these, although I'll probably buy new springs and other little bits and pieces from the, the spares because they do wear out. Um, what else was there? Another starter motor. That's a dynamo, I think. I'm not sure what that's off. I don't think it would have been off a Riley. Um, this one is. So I've got two of those now. Hopefully one of those is good to use. Um, there's spare rocker gear, which is good because I need more of these arms. Um, one of the things I did do recently, though, is buy some um, steel light uh, welding rod. Somebody mentioned this in the comments, which is sort of a, one of those hard-facing type welding rods. So I'm going to try and building these up and then grinding them back to shape. I've got enough spares now that I've, I can practice. Um, there's a set of pistons there. And this is the, the handbrake rod which I was missing. So that's really, really useful. Uh, somewhere here there should be the steering drag link. Which is this. Oh, which is buried under parts. That goes from the the arm on the steering box to the front axle that I was definitely missing so that was definitely a part I needed 
but it was worth getting this this collection of bits there's a whole other steering box and steering column um, there was also the the control shaft that goes down through the middle uh, came with a set of wheels so I've now got a, a second set of wheels it's got massive tires on it uh, what are they 475 19s um, and it also came with a very nice radiator turn that around it's obviously a saloon car radiator but this is the one that I got with my my Brooklyn's parts and this is a mod this has been modified so this was built up from something like this but this one isn't quite that one isn't quite the right height so you can sort of see how this is one of these that's been modified this is almost too nice to modify it's um it would be a shame to cut it up but between the two i've got a good pattern of what a radiator should look like i just need to confirm the height and then um, i might have a go at making one but what else did it come with um obviously the the, the front axle and the rear axle are assembled so I need to I want to pull this apart because another one of the parts I needed were these backing plates and these plates here which I can use on my car but you have to get the the half shafts out so there's a bearing in here and there's another bearing in here in the differential so I need to pull out the half shafts before I can take the torque tube off and the way to do that is with a slide hammer um, I don't have one, but I've got enough bits of junk, bits of steel and pipe and, and stuff around that I'm actually going to try and make one. This is what I've come up with for building some sort of slide hammer. This is a piece of fairly thick wall steel tube. Uh, into the end of this I'm going to weld this. 12 mil high tensile bolt with the head cut off so that'll give me a threaded end and for the slide part I'm using this thick wall steel tube and I've got another piece of tube which slides quite nicely over this other piece I'm going to weld that this is um, 6 mil steel I cut this out of a sheet using my very battered now hole saw and uh, just cleaned it up on the lathe I will weld this to here to give me the sliding part and then I'm going to weld this heavy tube to the outside of it uh, I'll just run a bead of weld all the way around and then I'm going to fill it with this and I think I've shown some of these cupcakes I've made before uh, the previous ones were aluminium these ones are actually lead so I spent ages, years really, um, any time I was out and about walking around, if I came across uh, wheel weights lying on the road, I'd, I'd pick them up, I'd rescue them. And I've done this for quite a long time, so I ended up with quite a, a big tin full of the things. Uh, I got hold of some other lead when my, my old roof was replaced and, and things like that. So I collected all that lead and then I, I melted it down. Um, here's another piece that's already been melt molten so again I just poured it into little cupcake molds just to make them more convenient but I'm going to melt down some of these lead blocks and I'm going to fill this up with lead so that'll make a nice heavy weight and I will weld this second piece as a stop around the end here so probably put a piece of foam on here as padding but then this will slide up and down along here the idea being this this heavy weight you have it on here you hold this end you attach this end to whatever it is you want to pull on um, I'll show how I think I can do that in a, in a second and then you just slide this weight down along the arm and it's just the force of that that uh, the inertia I guess of this moving into that stop 
imparts a force on there which gives you a, a good strong pull. So hopefully it means I can then pull the, the half shafts out, also the front hubs off. So this is a gear puller, this isn't big enough to be able to just fit over the end of the, the hubs. But what I think I will do is, these are six stud wheels, I'm going to make three little bars uh, from flat bar, three straps. That'll, that'll fit over these holes, uh, these studs, be bolted on, so I'll have a flat strap there. And then my puller will be big enough to grip the edges of those flat straps and I can pull on this. And hopefully that'll be enough to pop this loose. Um, it's similar on the, the front, on the stub axles, I need to kind of do the same thing, basically pull this off. You can almost get a puller on here, if you pull these caps out, um, and you've got a big enough puller, you can pull these off the end of the stub axle. But I think the slide hammer will work a bit better. Um, I have actually only managed to get one stub axle off the, the main front axle. Uh, it was very, very worn out. I was sitting there looking at it thinking, how am I going to get the kingpin out? I turned it upside down and the kingpin literally dropped out on this side. It just, it just fell straight through, uh, which means it's very, very worn. Uh, on the other side, these are actually threaded, and you can thread a bolt into there and use that to kind of pull the pin out. Uh, but this one has a bolt sheared off in there. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is drive it out from the bottom. Um, the bottom bush in here is blind because it normally contains grease or oil. So that's why you can't normally just knock them out through the bottom. But because I'm not going to be reusing those, it's it's... It makes sense for me to drill a hole in the bottom and then just drift it out. But I'll try and pull the, the hub off first. It'll just make it a bit easier if I can pull the hub off and then pull the back plate off. Uh, makes it easier to get to everything. So I'm going to um, basically get the, get the MIG welder out, clean these tubes up a little bit, get the rust off them, and start welding this thing together. I need to see if I've got an old tin can or something to mount down the lead. Um, I'm sure I can find something I can mount that down in. This is the finished slide hammer. I melted some lead, filled up the, the steel tube here with the molten lead, uh, and this now weighs about 3.5 kg, so it's quite a mass on there. And I did start playing with the the three jaw puller and then I realized there was an easier way which was I just used a decent sized piece of chain and I put that under two of the wheel studs with with hardened washers under them and I just used that so you can um, can't really do it with one hand but obviously this slides up and down the tube and when it slides back it just gives it a, a bit of a kick and you can see that's popped the, the hub off the bearing on this side and it's pulled the, the shaft out of the spider gear and out of the inner bearing. So that worked pretty well. Uh, it took a few goes of quite a bit of tugging on it, pulling on it to, um, to get it to come out, but it worked in the end. I will probably paint that up just so it doesn't rust because it's all just mild steel. But I'll have a quick go with the, the other side to pull the, the other half out. Uh, you need to take the, the half shafts out, of course, to be able to get the torque tube off. Um, because the differential is attached to the back of the torque tube. The, the housing just comes off. So I'm going to have a go on the other side, see if I can get that shaft out. And uh, I'll probably leave the front ones for the morning, but that'll be the same sort of deal. I managed to get both half shafts out in the end. Uh, they're pretty tight in there, it takes quite a bit of work to, to get them out. So theoretically now I should just be able to pull the torque tube um, with the differential out of the axle housing and then I can dismantle the, the rear backing plates and bearings.
uh, you can sort of see how there's a a nut on here this is threaded and there's a spring clip that stops that nut coming undone and this is the main bearing main rear bearing and there are these star shaped plates um, I've bought new ones of those that have modern oil seals in them to uh, to stop oil getting on the the brakes so that puller tool is actually working fairly well uh, you do have to be a bit careful you don't get your hand pinched when you're using it uh, that hurts quite a lot the other two tools that have turned up one is the the bolt stretch gauge uh, so I can measure the the big end bolts I may turn up a slightly longer bolt with a pin for this end because this just seems to get caught up on the bottom of the conrod so this pin needs to be a little bit longer um, this is just a, an M6 thread so this came from uh, Summit Racing in the States uh, apparently it's going to give me cancer they also sent uh, in the package one of their catalogs which is which is fascinating reading um, just seeing how much US car stuff is available um, at just effectively ridiculously cheap prices so I'm pretty sure you could buy a an entire 450 horsepower V8 engine for what I paid for the crankshaft in my Riley um, so it just shows how having a massive market over there they can do some uh, stuff so much cheaper the other thing I bought recently is this burette and I'm going to use this for when I'm figuring out the combustion chamber volumes um, I've wanted one of these for a long time it turns out they're not that expensive so it doesn't have to be a very high-end lab grade one you can get the cheaper ones uh, I think I got this from a, a school supplies type place um, I think it was about thirty dollars so I need to make a stand for this pretty sure as a kid I had a, a, a proper stand but uh, that's long gone so I'll just make up a simple wooden stand for this so that you can um, hold it above the, the cylinder head, fill it up and use that to measure the volumes. I may need to do that on the cylinders, cylinders themselves as well. Um, just because I'm not sure how you work out the volume when you don't have a flat top piston. So I've got domed pistons so you need to take that into account. It may just be easier to measure it. But the front hubs I'm still working on. Now this is the one that just came off the the axle the kingpin dropped out so I'm trying the same trick I've just got it held in the vise uh, this one seems really stuck so I've squirted some penetrating fluid into the center of the hub uh, but it seems to be working pretty well one thing I have noticed though is that you have to be careful you don't damage the, the threads the threads here are fine because these are done up tight but uh, here I'm a bit worried I'm going to damage my threaded end if that happens, I can always just cut it off and weld on a new one. But it works fairly well. I've stripped down all the Riley bits and pieces as much as I can to get the, the bits and pieces I need. So there's the engine sitting there. I'll probably use that engine bar that's uh, in better condition than the one I've got. This head is actually not too bad, so it's good. I've now got a spare head and block. Uh, poor old Austin's push back there. I've started trying to organize the shelves a bit better and put some of the stuff up and away. Uh, there should be enough room for everything if I just get better organized. I pulled apart the differential in the, the torque tube. Uh, that was actually quite a bit of work. Um, the pinion screws into the end of the, the shaft and you should be able to stick a bar in there and sort of rotate it round to get that to unscrew but it was so tight I sort of had to hammer it with a brass drift a couple of degrees at a time until it came out um, eventually I got it out though and I didn't end up pulling the front hubs off the stub axles I, I realized I didn't need to and to get the second kingpin out I just drilled through the bush and used a drift to knock it out um, mainly because it was all completely worn out you wouldn't use it again like that uh, I don't want to touch some of the stuff now because it's all covered in grease but uh, 
getting the, the large nut off the end of the rear axle was quite hard on one side. One side came undone easily, the other side, um, it looks like the thread had been damaged at some point and you could tell the nut had been hammered on and off with a chisel. So I couldn't get anything onto the nut to get it to come un undone, so I had to do the same. But again, you wouldn't reuse that stuff unless you were really desperate. Uh, the gearbox is is good. It's in nice condition. It's a silent third gearbox. I'll probably pull that U-joint off there and see if that's usable. I do have another one, but I need to machine up new bushes for it. And this pile is most of the bits and pieces that I want to use on, on my car. Uh, this is a box of engine parts that I need to just go through. There are some tappets and things like that in there. Maybe those are reusable. Um, same with the rocker covers, there's actually uh, two and a bit sets of those, so there's two full ones there and a sort of another half there. And I'm hoping between that set of rocker arms and the ones I already have, I can pick the best ones or I can try um, welding up and grinding back some of the really worn out ones. Um, this, I'm trying to figure out if that's a better drag link to use than the one I've got. Uh, the one I have has a slight kink in it, a bend in it. I'm not sure what for. So once I uh, actually figure out, there's the, uh, uh, that's the drop arm, sorry, the drag link is under there. Once I rebuild that drag link, I'll figure out which arm gives me the best geometry and use that. Um, that's a good sump. Uh, not sump, diff cover. Uh, it's actually aluminium. On mine, it's all been broken and then repaired down here. This one's in much nicer condition. Uh, the back plates, I'll clean all of those up. Those are torque tube shims, which I will need. I'm not sure if those are going to be correct or not, but at least it gives me something to try. This is the speedometer drive gear. My old one was completely worn out, so that was something I was going to have to buy new and those aren't cheap so that's quite good having that. Uh, the brake lever someone has obviously modified. You can see that's quite mangled. It's been bent to, to bring it back. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'll, I'll use that or not but the rest of the mechanism is all good. And this is one of the reasons you don't reuse a lot of these old parts. This is one of the shackle pins, and you can see how much wear there is in that. It's just so worn out. Um, and that's why you, even if you get a parts car like this, there's a good chance if it's, if it's an original car that a lot of the original parts are going to be so worn out you can't use them anyway. So I've got new ones of those. Uh, that box is full of bits and pieces. I have my brake drums. And the only thing I'm a bit confused about over here, I took apart this remote shifter and this is obviously something somebody has made because you can see how the top of the silent third gearbox has an extra piece welded onto it. To accept all of this, uh, the welding on there is a little bit, a little bit dodgy, not the best, but so this is obviously something somebody has made. Um, I don't know if this is modified from something else or they, they made a casting for this. Uh, it's kind of interesting. But the issue I have at the moment is this is a, an original top, although it actually almost looks like a, a new casting because there's some um, porosity in there. Porosity. Um, just the look of the casting, it's it's not doesn't seem the same as a an original one. But both of these suffer from the same issue at the moment, which is this is the reverse selector, and it won't move back. It'll only move that far, and then it's hitting something. Same with this one. All my tools are here because I need to clean all the grease off them. But if you look in here, you can see these are the selector forks that go backwards and forwards. And this is the gate that stops you managing to select 
multiple gears and the pin on the end of the gear shifter goes in here between these forks so it goes up and down and then can move across so this is the reverse gear all the way forward but I can't get that that should be able to come all the way back so that this slot lines up with this thing but it's it's stuck it's hitting something I'm not sure what uh, the funny thing is, this one is the same. It's, uh, you can see down in there, it's, it's probably a bit too dark. But uh, this one's the same. It, it, it comes back and then it hits. So I'm not sure what's going on there. That's something I need to look at. Uh, not that I'm probably going to use these ones. I've got, I've got another one and I'm actually probably going to get the proper Brooklyn style remote shifter. Um, because it is Brooklyn. So... It's more just out of interest. I, I don't see what's locking those up at the moment. Um, I think that's probably about it. I have all the nuts and bolts and some of the other little bits and pieces and brackets and, and rod ends and things like that actually sitting outside in a plastic tub full of degreaser because you can see everything was full of grease. Um, if you've never dismantled a proper vintage car before, uh, especially things like the gearbox and the differential. If they've been sitting for a really long time, there's a very distinctive smell. Uh, it's kind of like old grease and oil. Uh, it's, it's, I like most old car smells, old garage smells, but that one is just unpleasant for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. It's just, it's just not nice. It's mainly it seems to be in the rear axles. Um, so everything, including me, is covered in this grease um, and I have to be really careful I don't step in it and then try to tread it all the, all the way through the house so I'm gonna have a bit of a clean up and then it's probably time to finish I haven't started cleaning up the uh, these parts here yet I need to degrease them and then start pulling them apart but I did degrease um, a pile of the the other bits and pieces and all the loose nuts and bolts so uh, That's got most of the muck off them. They still need a pretty good cleanup I haven't even started really looking at the engine, but it's really just a spare now So I'll just have to figure out somewhere to store that um, I ended up doing a bit more Organizing on the shelving I've got a bit of space up there now and just moving things around a little bit before I moved, I got rid of the, the grit from my my little blasting cabinet. So I've ordered new grit for it. And um, before that arrives, I finally got around to doing something I've been meaning to do with this a lot, for a long time, which is run around all the seams on the thing with some silicone. Um, it's always dropped a, a, a small amount, but an annoying amount of sand out of it when you're using it so I've gone and, and seemed seam sealed all the way around um, I've also had to repair the the gloves which um, started ripping not where you would think around the fingers which are the bits that get blasted with the sand but actually up on the the edge bits up here um, started wearing a bit thin so I've sort of patched those up a bit and just reorganizing things, moving things around a little bit more, trying to make more space. Um, but I haven't actually managed to do anything on the car, which is still sitting under its covers. Those are the gloves. I've just got the uh, steel weights holding the patches down. And even though it's a long weekend, I was really hoping to start sorting out my little my little office lab thing there, but. Uh, haven't even had a chance to get to it. There's just always too much other stuff to do.